a quick video review of an oil sump option for the Porsche 996 and 986 on the M96 engine. This is the bottom of an M96 engine where the oil pan sits. The oil pickup is in the middle and oil drains down through these tubes on the side and some of it through the center. This is the bottom of the oil pan on the inside. The factory part looks like this. And I'm going to review very quickly this newer oil pan, a deep sump oil pan from LN Engineering. It's sold from multiple sites online and it adds about two, oil, two quarts of additional oil capacity and it is roughly uh, an inch thick. Quick the basics. This is the existing baffle. And the idea of this baffle is as oil flows into either here or onto the sides, it's going to flow back into the center point. And when you take a corner and that car leans, or more importantly, the G-forces line up and all the oil is pushed to one side or the other, we're trying to keep as much oil in there as possible. That's why these flappers act as one-way valves. The downside is halfway through the corner on a high G turn, you can run, a, run out of oil capacity in there. And now you have zero oil pressure because the oil pickup sits roughly right there. The idea of the deep sump certainly first it adds additional oil capacity as you're going through the corner and the g-forces load up there's a big reservoir of oil down here so there's more capacity before it drains dry secondly is the oil that's in this area you still want to prevent it from going to side to side Porsche sells a solution like this. I think it's called the X51. And the idea is the area in that metal can actually be bigger than the area in the plastic and they try to seal up that entire compartment. So the, the concept makes a lot of sense. What I have been disappointed in is with this X51 baffle, or the X, this is not an X51, this aftermarket baffle from LNN is poorly engineered. Let me show you why. First, as oil is being pushed to the side, you want that thing sealed. Well, look at these flappers. There's significant gaps here. There are significant gaps on the side, even when it's pushed shut. The reality is a significant amount of oil can seep through there. Secondly, if we put that piece in place in the engine, easier said than done, it sits in that location, so you can see where these, there we go. You can see where these flappers are, and imagine this being loaded up with the oil right now, and as you go through a corner, oil is gonna be pushed to this side or pushed to this side, and we wanna prevent that flow of oil going from one side of the engine or the other. Well, not only can oil go past these seeping valves, but if you look up alongside the engine, there's significant gaps as you can see here, there's significant gaps between, there we go, significant gaps between this oil filter and the engine block here. Likewise, you can see it on this side, there's significant gaps between this baffle and the side of the engine. And so if oil was trying to be pushed this direction, it can go through the sides of this oil filter because of those gaps, you can see a big gap here. It can go along the sides here and it really does a poor job maintaining that oil because it's just the wrong physical size. They did not put the right tolerance on this part before they manufactured it. The final piece is this baffle makes a lot of sense because now remember, there's another, sorry for my poor camera work here, guys. Roughly speaking, this is now full of oil. So you can imagine this entire piece in this plenum full of oil. But again, as the oil is pressed from one side to the other, you wanna keep all the oil in this underpan sealed in there. Well, look at the gaps on both this side and this side. If there's pressure to one side, that oil has the possibility of easily actually leaking up into this because it's effectively having this engine tilted under a G-load. And so that oil, while you're trying to hold it down here, it's going to weave up to the side as that engine is tilted under the high G-load, and you're going to run out of oil more rapidly. So net-net is it will still work better than stock because you have a higher oil capacity underneath. 
you have physically moved that pickup about an inch and a quarter lower in the vehicle. And so all of that is good. It's just that I like l and Engineering as a company, but this is one where they did a poor job laying it out or a poor job in the manufacturing tolerances, and it's not going to work nearly as well as the factory solution. The third thing that I looked at, though, was, well, let's take the benefits of the deeper well and add to it the actual stock part. So you take the part from Porsche plus the deeper baffle and you're golden. Well, that makes sense in, in theory. The downside is it won't install because if you look at the bottom of this baffle, there's a gap between this and this. And so the net is you need to drop this entire piece down about five millimeters for it to fit in the vehicle. So then your options are, do you cut this outside piece of metal, which is fairly thick, or do you cut down this entire plastic piece, which is brittle, or do you cut down this lower lip all the way around, and coupled it with that, you will notice, oops, that it doesn't line up perfectly either, so you still have these gap issues on the left and the right. Net net guys is, I think this is a, a halfway decent solution to get it down more. However, the retail price point on that is $1,000. And this piece is poorly designed. Listen, I don't have a great answer for you on this one. I have an AccuSump in the car, it works well. I'm gonna do an AccuSump and this because I do run out of oil pressure on the track. I think the conclusion on this one is I'm gonna install the Accu, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna install the LNN system with this poor with this baffle because it's the only easy way to go install this thing but i wanted to give you a heads up that while it's a great concept it's poorly executed good luck with your motor bye-bye